I'm a bit of a lemming. I'm not a, I'm not, I, I don't, I'm not a self-starter and I'm not sort of the first one out of the gate, but I'm a wonderful second in command. Um, anyway, all my friends, I went to Circle in the Square when I first got there. And uh, I think by the first summer, all my friends went away to study with this playwright who I didn't know about, but they came back completely jazzed. And then I did a second year of uh, Circle in the Square, and they went again to study with this wonderful playwright, David Mamet, who I didn't know. But by that point, they were going, you have to come. He's going to start a studio. You have to come. You have to be a part of this studio. And I went, okay. So I got back after the second summer vacation, and I went in to interview to change studios. And there was this guy who I didn't know named Bill Macy with the Lacoste shirt and the collar turned up and sort of blonde hair. And uh, I was ready with all my acting questions and why I liked acting. And I'd just gotten back from traveling around Europe with a boyfriend. And all I wanted to do was talk about Europe, where we went and what kind of food we ate. So I talked to him about that and he let me in. Thanks, Bill. <laughs> and um, I started going to the Practical Aesthetics Workshop, which is now the Atlantic Theater Company School. And um, that group of people from that class, David, we studied with David Mamet and William H. Macy, who was like a god and had this, he was really cool and really funny and really smart. And David was brilliant and really empowering. And um, at around Christmas break, David Mamet said, I'm going to the Goodman Theater to direct my translation of The Cherry Orchard. And we all went, ah. And he said, do you want to come? And we all went, yay. So somehow David fixed it that we got credit through NYU and got to go to Chicago. And we were all interns at the Goodman Theater at the time um, run by Gregory Mosier. And so we all went there and got apartments and worked at the Goodman and did a bunch of plays and you know, got popcorn for people and got coffee for other people and studied acting and took dance. And at the end of that, David and Bill turned to us and said, well, we don't have anything else to teach you. Why don't you start a theater company? And it was as if someone had said, well, you're done interviewing people. Why don't you start your own network? And you go, what? Um, and because of David Mamet's belief in us and backing, uh, we did. And we started the Atlantic Theater Company. And everybody wrote to their parents and their uncles and their siblings and said, could you give us, could you donate anywhere from 20 to $50 for the theater? I remember writing these letters. Dear Uncle Bill, I've become a part of a theater company. And, um, you know, I think we pooled our money and had about $500. And we spent a couple of years in Chicago doing theater and fighting and having company meetings. The first Atlantic Theater Company meetings were after everybody was done their waitering shift. So we would have company meetings at about midnight. And we finally made a real rule that they couldn't go over two hours because everyone's really tired and fighting. And I remember them going to like four o'clock in the morning with like, you didn't sell any ads. Well, you didn't sell, you didn't sew my costume correctly. This play is bullshit. Um, so we finally said company meetings have to only be two hours. And from that, after a couple of years in Chicago, we all were homesick. So we literally hired, we, we rented a big U-Haul van. We went around Chicago to everybody's apartments, loaded up the stuff, and drove back to New York. Wow. <laughs> what would you say is your biggest creative takeaway from that period in your life? Um, my biggest creative takeaway... I guess I would say attach yourself to people who are more intelligent and more talented than you. That's what I would say. Surround yourself with people who sort of know what they're going doing and then just sort of go with the flow. That That's what I did. I mean, again, I'm not a self-starter. So if someone went, we're going to go back to New York, I was like, okay, <laughs> we're going to stay in Chicago. Oh, okay. <laughs> the Atlantic Theater Company is one of the premier off-Broadway theaters in New York. I mean, it's 
It's got a huge budget now. It has a beautiful theater. It has real offices. I mean, I remember when we got a telephone number, obviously back before cell phones, but we were like, we have a telephone number, 645-0815. <laughs> and it was such a big deal. People would, you can call the theater now. You could leave a message for someone. Um, I remember at company meetings where part of it was <laughs> everyone had to give $5 at every company meeting to sort of keep the company going. Um, I remember our first artistic directors. Clark Gregg was an artistic director for a while. Scott Ziegler was an artistic director for a while. Clark Gregg, I just remind him, I, I, I reminded him of this the other day, but he would want to acknowledge people. So what he would do is he'd take pieces of paper and he'd draw his hand out. And then he'd take little scissors and cut his hand out like a high five. <laughs> and then like, you know, if you did a great job on props, you'd go, hey, hey, high five, and hand you this cut out thing. And for some reason, we all went, I got a hand. I mean, we're in our 20s. Look, I got a hand. It was so cute.